California's entire tectonic plate has shifted, and it's going to be a bigger monster this time. Our models are predicting a 9.5 or greater. Seen here at Grand Central Station, over half the platforms are flooded, and service has been suspended on all trains. The Hoover Dam disaster flash flood struck the communities of Kingman, Laughlin, Lake Havasu, and Yuma, Arizona. A wall of water reaching several hundred feet high tore through the area. What you're seeing is what's left of downtown. California, home to millions of people and numerous cities, sits atop a fault line that spans over 800 miles from Cape Mendocino to the Mexican border. The San Andreas Fault has a long history of creating high-powered earthquakes, which is why it is closely monitored by the U.S. government and all Californians alike. But now, a recent discovery in the San Andreas Fault area has revealed that a section of the fault has undergone something called a seismic creep which is when the plates move gradually, releasing stress without causing large quakes. But, as researchers looked back millions of years, they found evidence that this section of the fault may have experienced earthquakes of a magnitude of 7 or greater. That's stronger than the infamous Loma Prieta earthquake that shook the Bay Area in 1989. But the question is, when is the San Andreas Fault going to crack? Will California slide into the sea when it happens? When massive and powerful earthquakes are discussed, the San Andreas Fault automatically comes to mind, especially for those living in California. It is a significant fracture of the Earth's crust in extreme western North America. This fault is divided into three segments. The northern segment from Hollister to the Mendocino Triple Junction, the central segment from Park Field to Hollister, and the southern segment from Park Field to the Salton Sea. The San Andreas Fault is greatly feared because of the tectonic movement detected around the foot as it's been associated with periodic earthquakes, said to often develop near the surface along its path. When geoscientists drilled into the Earth's surface nearly two miles below as part of the SAFI project, they discovered something incredible, a zone of the fault that has experienced not just one or two, but potentially more than 100 earthquakes. A perfect example Americans aren't going to forget so soon is the disastrous earthquake that happened in 1906. Another one occurred in 1989 but wasn't as severe as the first one. Five years later, a more powerful and destructive earthquake happened in the Los Angeles suburb of Northridge along one of San Andreas' larger secondary faults. But what type of fault is the San Andreas Fault? San Andreas Fault would be classified as a strike-slip fault. This means the fault's two sides move horizontally past each other rather than vertically. It's this movement that creates the directivity pulse and allows energy to be transmitted down the fault. Many people believe that tectonic plates move at an incredible speed, but the reality is quite different. These plates move past each other at a sluggish pace of just a few inches per year equivalent to the rate at which your fingernails grow. Despite this slow rate, plate movement is far from steady. In some years, the plates can be locked in place, pushing against one another with no motion. However, strain gradually builds up over time until the rock breaks along the fault, and the plates suddenly slip a few feet. This sends out waves in all directions. While the San Andreas Fault runs underground, it is visible in some places the San Andreas Fault is not the only fault in California, but it is the 800-pound gorilla of faults here. A well-known geological feature in California, which stretches about 800 miles from the Gulf of California to Cape Mendocino. This fault serves as the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North. Being one of the longest and most significant faults in the world, it runs through some of the most populated regions of California, like Los Angeles and San Francisco. The fault's length makes it highly prone to seismic activity, as a longer fault has a more significant potential for disaster. The recent revelations by the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Thomas H. Jordan, have caused significant concerns for Californians as he announced that the San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state, indicating that a powerful earthquake could be on the horizon. While news of a looming earthquake may not surprise California residents, who have long feared the fault's potential for catastrophic events, the new warning was particularly alarming. Jordan warned that the fault's Southern California section could give way at any moment, saying that certain areas seems like they are ready to go. Indeed, this news would have turned the minds of every Californian and made them almost have their hearts in their mouths. However, the new warning that made them even more scared is that Southern California's section of the fault could give way at any point. This announcement was made during the National Earthquake Conference that took place in Long Beach. 
and according to him, the springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very tight, and the southern San Andreas fault, in particular, looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go. He also said, the fault has been quiet, too quiet. But what would happen if the big one comes? A simulation of a possible magnitude 7.8 earthquake on the San Andreas Fault was done by Thomas Jordan and his team. The simulation starts at the Salton Sea and spreads west toward the San Gabriel Mountains while it shows seismic shaking waves bent into the Los Angeles area. Within minutes, the earthquake's waves spread over California, destroying older structures, causing traffic problems, and cutting off water and electric supplies. However, they observed that the earthquake was just the beginning, and that hundreds of fires, broke out as a result of the clogged highways and damaged water systems. Smaller flames combined into bigger ones, destroying whole portions of the city. Lucy Jones, a seismologist at the USGS, argues that the scenario may be overstated. Jones says that the scientists who did the analysis were shocked by how bad the fire damage was from the earthquake. If the Santa Ana winds are blowing at the time of the earthquake, things could get even worse. Even though Los Angeles has a water supply on its side of the San Andreas Fault, the drought has caused the reservoirs to run dry. Because of this, these seasonal winds blow dusty, dry air from the interior to the coast, which makes wildfires more likely. The potential damage from a future earthquake on the San Andreas Fault is why scientists and government officials are closely monitoring the situation. The United States Geological Survey has developed earthquake early warning systems, which can alert people of an earthquake before the shaking begins. These systems can provide seconds or even minutes of warning, giving people a chance to prepare and take cover. Now, a recent discovery in the area has shown that the San Andreas Fault is in a critical state and could be on the verge of cracking. The last time the South San Andreas region suffered such a disaster was in 1857, when a magnitude 7.9 earthquake ruptured a breathtaking 185 miles. Still there is something far more sinister than a high-magnitude seismic event. One of the reasons why the San Andreas Fault should be feared is not how much energy it has, but what it can bring afterwards the study led by University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign civil and environmental engineering Professor Ahmed Albana and Professor Aries Rozakis of the California Institute of Technology. Sheds light on the dangers of coastal areas surrounding the fault. The connection between strikeslip faulting and tsunamis has been a topic of exploration. The simulations revealed that intersonic earthquakes, which are fault ruptures that happen so quickly that their movement outpaces the shaking waves they generate, can trigger massive tsunami waves. Major flooding is a possibility. Rivers and streams may become jammed up as a result of the rupture leading to flooding in the area. Furthermore, earthquakes can trigger landslides which can block rivers and lead to flooding. Strong tremors along the San Andreas Fault have been known to trigger extensive flooding in the areas nearby. So, how destructive would it be? Although the San Andreas Fault is most commonly associated with earthquakes, it's also a potential flood zone. The seismic risk in Southern California can only be understood and mitigated with ongoing observation and study. While it is impossible to completely eliminate the risk of earthquakes, it is possible to lessen the damage they do by being well prepared. The revelations of the study state that it can cause significant damage to coastal areas including flooding and destruction of buildings and the amount of damage caused by a tsunami depends on several factors, including the size and speed of the wave, the slope of the coastline, and the height of the sea level. In addition, these waves can travel across entire oceans, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. As you might know, the Chilean tsunami in 1960 is a prime example of the devastation that these events can cause. This tsunami was generated by a massive 9.5 magnitude earthquake that ruptured over a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers, causing destruction in Chile and as far away as Hawaii and Japan. The movie fanatics among you might already know about this, if you watched the movie, San Andreas, featuring the one and only Dwayne Johnson. Before making San Andreas, the people who made it talked to Thomas Jordan, who runs the Southern California Seismic Center. However, the level of destruction depicted in the film significantly exceeds the actual potential damage that could be caused by a catastrophic earthquake, known as the Big One. It is likely that the filmmakers did not adhere closely to Jordan's recommendations. According to Jordan, since the San Andreas Fault lies far inland and the land slips past on either side, an earthquake cannot cause the fault to split apart into a massive chasm as in the movie. 
Instead, big tsunamis like the one that struck Japan are caused by earthquakes that cause a significant displacement of the ocean floor. Although San Andreas remains the most significant threat, only by continued monitoring and research can we hope to understand and reduce the seismic hazard over Southern California. We can never prevent earthquakes, but by knowing what may happen we can prepare for them. Do you think the San Andreas Fault will cause more damage than the Southern California Earthquake Center predicted, or will the San Andreas Fault remain silent forever? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always thanks for watching our video. See you in the next one.